Hi and welcome to my channel. So the UK is a country that has always relied heavily on overseas recruitment when it comes to nursing jobs. And this is something that, in fact, recently they released data saying that the UK currently, as we speak, they have 56,000 vacancies. But let me tell you something. If you are an overseas nurse, especially if you've got your ART, OET, CBT and even the OSCE, it doesn't really feel like they've got 56,000 vacancies because it has been very challenging for many people to find jobs. And this is because of the recent changes that have been introduced in the UK. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you what these changes are so that whether you're already in the UK at the moment or you're still out of this country, it is crucial that you get this information because if you don't know what the changes are, it's very, very difficult to get a job. You know, it's going to take you ages because you don't even know what the processes are. So if you're new to my channel, you're welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, as usual, I appreciate your time. I would like you to leave a comment in the comment section below and say, Melvis, I will implement this because implementation is key. Implementation is what is going to take you to the next step of your journey. And if you're not aware, I also have a free newsletter. I've dropped the link in the comment section below. You can contact me there. You know, it's got my WhatsApp number, my email address. The newsletter means that I send information directly to your inbox. It won't take you 20 seconds to join. You drop your name and email and you're part of it so that when those changes happen, when new opportunities occur, whether to move to the UK or for career progression, then I send that directly to your inbox. So check the comment section below and make sure that you do join or contact me directly if you want to talk about your specific circumstances because youtube is all good and fine for generic information but guess what getting that tailored guidance getting that one-to-one -one support talking to somebody about your specific circumstances is something that is mind-blowing it's life-changing and it's career-changing so you need to make sure that you're not just taking superficial advice on youtube but you're getting advice about your circumstances so what is really going on there's been lots of changes in recent times when it comes to uk overseas recruitment one thing I'm going to say is there's a lot about the red list countries as well as the green list countries and they've even got amber list countries. So I would like you to drop a comment in the comment section below. Which country are you watching from? And you will let me know, are you from an amber list country, a red list country or a green list country? Because it helps me to tailor the information that I'm providing so that it's helpful and it's more relevant for you. You know, because depending on where you're from and what your circumstances are, there are going to be different pathways that you're eligible for and that you can apply for. So one of these changes also is that the NMC now has pathways where even if you don't have the required grade for IELTS or OET, you can still work in the UK as a registered nurse. This is something that is amazing. It's massive. There was a huge consultation that went on. You know, it took ages for the NMC to come through to this. Um, but that is a pathway that now that has been implemented. I've personally supported hundreds and hundreds of overseas candidates who are now working in the UK successfully without having that grade for IELTS or OET. And if you're not aware, by the way, I am a nurse myself. I started my UK journey as a carer. Then I studied nursing. I've got a master's in mentorship in nursing. I also have a master's in advanced, you know, clinical practice. So I now work as an advanced nurse practitioner, which is the most senior clinical nursing job in the profession. So I'm very passionate about these processes because I've gone through all of this. And so I've got a private career coaching program. I've dropped a link in the description box below or the about section of this channel where I offer one-to-one -one tailored individualized and personalized guidance. I mean, there are three different options depending on what you want. And it's only for the top 1% of people that like me are interested and invested in personal and professional development. So if you're contacting me or you're considering joining my coaching program, make sure that you're ready to work very hard. You know, because if you're not ready to work hard and you're like, Melvis, are you going to do it for me? Oh, what about the NMC? Are you going to look, you need to be ready to put in the work because competent nurses, nurses that are going to treat their patients, you know, look, you need to know what you're doing. That's what I'm saying. So if you're part of the top 1%, obviously check the description box below or you can just contact me in the comment section. You see my details to talk about what is in this for you and whether it's appropriate for you. So, and that's fine. And so when it comes to IELTS or OET, the easiest and the most straightforward pathway to move to the UK as a nurse still is just writing your IELTS, OET, CBT, that traditional process. But what is the biggest change, you know, that has occurred 
in recent times regarding recruitment. Oh my God, this is massive because 99.999% of UK organizations, NHS, care homes, private companies, most of them are no longer using recruitment agencies. This is a massive, massive change. If you watch till this moment, I want you to drop a comment in the comment section and just say recruitment agencies. Because when you're asking questions and things, I need to know who's watched the video until what point. Because it just helps me to know, you know, what you have heard so far and the type of guidance that you may need. So drop a comment in the comment section and say recruitment agency. So they're no longer using recruitment agencies. The reason for this, obviously, is not about red list or green list countries because some people are concerned because they've already got their ALT, they've got their OET, they've got their CBT, they've got everything. Some people even have the OSCE because they've gone through the self-sponsorship road to come to the UK and all of that and still they don't have a job at the end of it and they're like, Melvis, what the, you know, is really going on? And so... If you find yourself in those circumstances, it's because of this change I've spoken about. They're no longer using recruitment agencies and it's simply because of cost. So it's not that those countries have been added to the red list. They're still on the green list, which means legally speaking, they could use recruitment agencies. It's only that UK companies, because of cost, they're no longer using recruitment agencies. And this is something that is huge because it has huge and massive implications. For example... If you are, say, the NHS, let me give an example of the NHS because they always release their data and it's publicly available online and you can see how much they spend to recruit one person. To recruit one nurse, for example, from overseas or from the UK or from wherever through a recruitment agency, if it costs you £10,000 for one nurse, what that means is that if you put a vacancy online and the people apply themselves, you're going to be saving £10,000 per nurse. So what many of them have done is they have recruited nurses that are working in recruitment and no nurses that are working in recruitment to recruit those nurses directly. And look, they're saving massively because if you pay a nurse or anybody £40,000 per year and they help you to recruit people working for you, You've only spent 40000 But if you're using a recruitment agency, if they provide 20 nurses, that is £10,000 times 20. That's how much it's going to cost you. And in a time where there are financial crises, where funding is really ridiculous within the NHS and where they're trying to take more money and put it where it really matters, patient care and all of that, recruitment also matters, but it's a lot cheaper to recruit people directly. So that's what they're doing. So if you're watching this, have you got your ALT or OET? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Have you got your ALT or OET or CBT? How far are you with the process? And I can also give you advice on what you can do from here going forward to be able to get to that next step because it is a massive challenge for many people that are from green list countries and they are very comfortable. They're used to the fact that I do my ALT, I do my OET, I do my CBT, an agency comes over to me, they recruit me, I get an interview slot and I move to the UK. That has changed. That's what I'm saying. Which means that how do you therefore apply? And by the way, if you know anybody that can benefit from this video, please do me a favor and share with them. Encourage them to apply so that they can, you know, achieve their goal of moving to the UK. Because when you move to the UK, especially if you come here and take advantage of the opportunities that are here for career progression, let me tell you, it's going to be the best decision that you've ever made. But if you come here... And you don't progress, you don't do anything else, you're not changing employers, you know, you are, it's going to be very hard. Or let me say it can be very tough. So it's about flexibility. You need to be flexible. And so how can you therefore apply directly if you are from, if you're in any of these circumstances? By the way, what this means is that if you're from a green list country or red list country or amber list country, there's no difference now. Everybody is the same. And you cannot use an agent to apply, you know, because it's how it is. You cannot use an agency to apply at this point in time because they're not using agencies anymore. And that's why initially agencies used to support people with the application process and all that. But the only reason they do that is because they're going to get a lot of money from the NHS or from the employer once you're recruited. But now that 
the agencies, the NHS or the companies are no longer using agencies. The, the agencies are no longer supporting the candidates, obviously. So candidates have now been left stranded. They don't know how to apply. They are not sure what the process is like and all of that. So by the way, I've done extensively detailed videos on here about all of this. If you want more information about how to apply details and all of that, I'm happy to share get more you know information about that i've also got loads of videos here that i've already shared about these processes but you need to, it takes a lot of time let me tell you it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience to go through these processes but that is the only way for you to get a job in the uk at this point in time because that's the process that they're following and it's been very effective. Many NHS hospitals have actually released data saying that they have saved millions. One NHS hospital released data recently saying that they've saved about £70 million by stopping the use of recruitment agencies as well as agency nurses. So, you know, again, this is something that you can argue whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but the thing is that it is working for many of those NHS hospitals that have stopped using agencies because they are saving a lot of money. And guess what? They're still able to recruit. The only disadvantage for this is that for the candidate, it is a lot more competitive to get a job because your application needs to be so good. Imagine that if one vacancy now for nursing is getting like 1,000 applications, if they need, I don't know, 500 people, because the, the numbers are quite high that they need as well, but it's just that your application needs to be good, you know, it needs to be up to standard. Because again, as a nurse, the expectations are very, very high because you're a qualified nurse. You're not coming to the UK as a nursing student. You're coming as somebody who is already a nurse. So you need to be able to articulate your value beautifully because there are loads of applications to go through. And so... That's the disadvantage for the candidates, but for the employers, it's been amazing because they have saved a lot of money and they're still able to recruit the staff that they need by simply putting out vacancies online on their website directly. What this means is if you want to apply for nursing jobs in a nursing home, you need to find the nursing homes that are recruiting and the vacancies are publicly available online. So the problem is not about the vacancies. It's about how do you apply thoroughly you know, professionally and in a way that meets the standards and requirements and puts you ahead of the game. That's what is the challenge. So NHS as well, all their vacancies are on their website directly. So if you're somebody who wants NHS, then you need to apply directly on their website. Like I've said, if you want care homes, they are recruiting directly, you know, on their website. Again, which websites, by the way, have you been using to apply for UK jobs? I would like you to leave that in the comment section below so that I can see, are you using the right websites? Are you using legit websites? Because many websites that have UK jobs saying that they are offering visa sponsorship are not legit, which means that you and I can just wake up, put information there to collect, you know, personal information or personal details when in real terms, we have no vacancies whatsoever. So you need to be very careful as a candidate, especially once you've got your ALT, your OET, your CBT, OSCE, self-sponsorship, whichever pathway you're pursuing to make sure that you are using the right channels in order for you to be successful. So this is a very important update. It's got nothing to do with red list, green list. Those countries are still on the green list. It's only that the UK has realized that if you recruit people directly, it actually costs you a lot less than using recruitment agencies. And that is why the recruitment business, when it comes to healthcare, many of the companies have literally just let, gone from earning hundreds of thousands of pounds per month to nothing, basically. So that has been a massive negative side on this, you know, on these businesses. I have many friends that have been affected. I've got a very, very good friend of mine, you know, she is an overseas nurse. She trained in India. Then she moved to the UK. She's currently working for the NHS as a matron. She has a very successful recruitment agency that she goes to India. She brings hundreds of nurses in the UK. Right now, I was talking to her the other day. She was like, Melvis, I've never seen anything like this. Not a single person. So that's what's happened. And if you're struggling to find a job, please, they are recruiting. They are giving visa sponsorship. The only thing is that you need to apply directly. You need to apply yourself. They're no longer using agencies and agents and all of that. That is a process. So just 
learn how to apply if you've got any questions any concerns drop that in the comment section below i'm happy to provide more information and i want you to leave a comment and say melvis i watched this video till the end because when you're asking questions i'll know that you listen to everything that i talked about and so i'll see you in this video right here